This book is called The Shark Who Bit Things He Shouldn't. And it's by Dennis Bond. Down at the bottom of the ocean, among the seaweed and the coral, there lived a shark. He was a fearsome shark. He always bit things he shouldn't. What a naughty shark. Every morning, as soon as he woke up, he headed straight for the old wrecked ship. He swished across its barnacle-covered deck and he swam past its splintered masts until he came to the large brass cannon. Here he stared at his reflection and smiled. Then he gazed lovingly at his sharp, gleaming white teeth. You're a handsome shark, he thought. Your teeth are so beautiful, so sharp, so white. Perfect for biting things they shouldn't. None of the other fish in the sea thought that the shark was handsome. And they all thought his teeth were scary. Well, they are a bit scary, aren't they? But luckily, because the teeth were so white, they could all see him coming for miles. Shark! They glugged as they sped away to hide. <laughs> the shark was extremely proud of his sharp, gleaming white teeth. Ideal for biting things they shouldn't, he said. Then, as he swam into the harbour, he noticed a thick piece of rope tied to the pier. For instance, I know I shouldn't bite that, he grinned, but I will. Snap, went his gleaming white teeth. Snap, snap, grind. And he bit right through the piece of rope. A man's angry face peered down into the water, suddenly startling the shark. Oi! the man glugged. He would have said more than that if he could, but he couldn't. He was under the water. Oi! he went. Oi! The other end of the rope was tied to the man's sailing boat, and now the man and his boat were slowly drifting out to sea. As the shark popped his head up from the water and smiled, the man shook his fist furiously. I know I shouldn't have bitten that rope, said the shark, but I did. And he swam on towards the shallow water at the edge of the beach, where there were lots of people paddling in the sea. They're having a great time, aren't they? None of them saw the shark's fin. Can you see the fin? None of them saw the gleaming white teeth. The shark saw two small girls playing with a beach ball. I shouldn't bite that, he said, but I will. And he did. Then he saw a little boy with a shrimping net on the end of a thin wooden cane. And I shouldn't bite that, he said, but I will. And he did. How terribly badly behaved. Then the shark got terribly excited. He noticed three small children floating towards him in a rubber dinghy. I know I shouldn't bite that. He said, but I will. The lifeguard had seen the shark's fin and he'd seen the shark's gleaming white teeth. Shark, he yelled as he ran into the water, but he was too late. Snap, went the gleaming white teeth. Snap, snap, grind. Bang, went the rubber dinghy. Bang, The terrified children tumbled into the water where the lifeguard quickly saved them. One man was still paddling. This is my favourite point. He hadn't heard the cry of shark. 
he was bending over, picking up pretty shells from the seabed. I know I shouldn't, thought the shark, but I will. Snap, he went on the man's bottom. He didn't bite too hard and he didn't go snap, snap, grind. He gave just one tiny nip. The man yelped and leapt into the air. My bottom shark, he shrieked. <laughs> that afternoon, lots of people had gathered on the town hall steps to see the mayor. Stop the shark, stop the shark, they yelled. You must do something, complained a man who was holding some pretty shells in one hand and rubbing his sore bottom with the other. The mayor went to the aquarium, where the aquarium owner showed him around. Now, the aquarium's where there's lots and lots of fish, and you might have been to one, or you might have a fish tank at home with lots of fish in. There were tanks of brightly coloured fish and seahorses and eels. I see you haven't got a shark, though, said the mayor. Would you like one? The aquarium owner leapt up and down with joy. Oh, yes, please, he said. So the mayor sent out a helicopter to search for the shark. And as it circled above the sea, the pilot used his binoculars, trying to catch sight of the fearsome creature with the sharp, gleaming white teeth. But he couldn't see it anywhere. The mayor also sent out a fishing boat with a large net. The captain instructed his crew to look out for something bright and shiny in the water. That'll be its teeth, he explained. The boat travelled for miles and miles looking for the shark, but it was nowhere to be seen. Did you see it? Could you see it in the water? I wonder what'll happen. As the helicopter and the boat disappeared into the distance, a granny arrived on the end of the pier holding a fishing rod. What are we going to use for bait? her grandson asked her. We'll need to use a maggot or a worm or a piece of bread. How about your toffee apple? suggested granny. The shark was basking beneath the pier. That means he was having a little rest. And when he saw a toffee apple on a piece of string plop into the water right in front of his eyes, he couldn't believe his luck. I know I shouldn't, he said, but I will. If we're lucky, we might catch a kipper for tea, Granny, said her grandson. Oh, we may even catch some fish fingers, Granny laughed. Perhaps we'll catch the shark, she joked. She suddenly stopped laughing when she felt a sharp tug on her fishing line. It almost pulled her into the water. What do you think it was? The shark realised immediately that he shouldn't have bitten into the toffee apple. It had got stuck to his sharp, gleaming white teeth. He couldn't open his mouth properly. He couldn't go snap and he certainly couldn't go snap, snap, grind. You'll know if you've ever had a piece of chewy toffee or a toffee apple, they do stick to your teeth. Shark pulled and pulled at the fishing line. Oh no, poor shark. Granny's grandson leaned over the edge of the pier. He could see a fin and he could see something bright and shiny under the water. Shark, he shouted and shark, yelled Granny. People came rushing along the pier to see what was happening. Help me, cried Granny, I'm being pulled over the edge. Her grandson quickly wrapped his arms around her waist. Clever boy. An old man held on to the grandson and a police officer held on to the old man. 
They pulled and they pulled and they pulled and the fishing rod began to bend. Very soon, there was a trail of people stretching right along the pier. They were all holding on to each other and they were pulling at the fishing line which was attached to the toffee apple, which was stuck to the shark's gleaming white teeth. Yes, yelled Granny excitedly, as she suddenly managed to pull her fishing line out of the water. Got him, she screeched. Hooray, everyone yelled as they tumbled backwards, landing heavily on each other. Granny's caught the shark! But Granny hadn't caught the shark. On the end of her fishing line was the toffee apple and stuck to the toffee apple were the shark's sharp, gleaming white teeth. Everyone stared and pointed at the teeth. Then they all laughed and laughed. But Granny didn't laugh. She felt sorry for the shark. And when he popped his head out of the water and she saw how embarrassed he looked and she saw the tears in his eyes, she understood exactly how he felt. Mine do that sometimes, she said. Look, and she took out her own teeth and she waved them at the shark. The shark smiled. And Granny smiled. They were both wide, gummy kind of smiles. Granny quickly removed the sticky toffee apple from the shark's teeth and she handed them back to him. And as he swam away feeling happy again, Granny called after him. Use them for eating, she said, and use them for smiling, she added. Don't use them to bite things you shouldn't. Good advice. Later that week, the shark saw something very interesting floating on the water. It was a lilo. And on the lilo were two people peacefully, happily sunbathing. The shark swam closer. Now... I know I shouldn't bite that, he said. And he didn't. <laughs> Lovely, I hope you like the story. Now, it might be time for us to say hello to Bertie again. I've got a treat here to lure him in. He's a bit like the shark who bit things he shouldn't, although he does tend to stick to the right kind of treats. Bertie! Bertie, come see! Come see what's this! Come and see! Hello! Yeah! How are you today? How are your gleaming white teeth? Let's see your gleaming white teeth. Oh, you're like a shark. Here we go. Would you like one? Oh, how gentle. Good boy. That's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the story. Take good care. See you again. Bye-bye.